Venezuelan opposition supporters have marked 100 days of anti-government protests with yet another march. Thousands gathered in the capital Caracas to listen to leaders, including the wife of Leopoldo Lopez, the hardline politician who was freed from jail on Friday. She's accused the authorities of torturing her husband. We complained against torture. In his final days in prison, he lost six kilos. His vision's not good either. Leopoldo was locked in a cell for 32 days without anything. He was denied food. They made him eat prison food and then he fell ill. The government has denied mistreating Lopez, who is now under house arrest after his early release from a 14-year jail term for allegedly inciting violence. Meanwhile, masked youths and security forces clashed again on Sunday. Latest reports say around 90 people have died and hundreds arrested since the unrest against President Maduro began at the start of April. Europe needs a more positive approach to migration. That was the message to representatives of 140 countries taking part in a migration and development forum being held in Berlin. German Foreign Minister Sigmar Gabriel said regulation should be linked to a host country's needs. For a successful migration policy, we don't just need bans, but also rules which allow us to use immigration as an opportunity, not just for ethical reasons, but quite simply out of economic self-interest. But on the front line of the migration issue, Italy has appealed to its EU partners for help in taking in African migrants. It's even threatened to stop boats from other countries from bringing more into its ports. More than 73,000 people have landed this year, and Rome says the situation has become unsustainable. Meanwhile, off the Libyan coast near Tripoli, the human cost of the migration problem was all too real. Rescue workers recovered the bodies of five migrants who had drowned in the Mediterranean Sea while trying to reach Europe. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson arrived in Ukraine for the first time on Sunday, meeting President Petro Poroshenko for talks. Afterwards, Tillerson said it's Russia that must take the first steps to stop the fighting in the east of the country. He also repeated that Washington's primary goal is the restoration of Ukraine's territorial integrity. We do call on Russia to honor its commitments that were made under the Minsk Accords and to exercise influence over the separatists in the region whom they do hold complete control over. And we call on them again to immediately call on their proxies to cease the violence that is ongoing in uh, East Ukraine. Tillerson also repeated that Russian interference in the U.S. election last year was still impeding better relations with Moscow. In fact, U.S.-Russian relations are at their lowest point since the Cold War. The downward trajectory in that relationship began when Russia annexed Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula in 2014, which led both the EU and the U.S. to impose economic sanctions on Russia. Iraq's Prime Minister arrived in Mosul on Sunday to congratulate the armed forces and celebrate the end of ISIL's control of the city. Haider al-Abadi's office said he wanted to pay tribute to the heroic fighters for a great victory. He met commanders in West Mosul, but there was no formal declaration that the entire city had been retaken. On Sunday, reports spoke of more airstrikes and exchanges of gunfire. But the soldiers are jubilant after nearly nine months of urban warfare. Mosul was by far the largest city to fall under the control of the so-called Islamic State. But large areas lie in ruins, thousands of civilians have been killed and nearly a million people displaced. Inside what's left of the city, residents who suffered under ISIL and from the fighting are emerging out into the open, malnourished and fearful according to army officers. The military success is not without cost. The elite force which spearheaded the fight is said to have suffered 40% losses. The point of departure, the Champs-Élysées in Paris, was symbolic. A policeman was murdered here in April in the name of political Islam. Some 60 imams are on a six-day tour of European cities hit by attacks, including Berlin, Brussels and London. Those behind the Muslim march against terrorism believe they have to do more to defend their religion. The co-organizer says it's symbolic. These people are religious, brave and have faith. 
They're Muslims who say no to barbarity, no to hate, no to terror. That's a strong symbol, the message we need to send. This French Jewish writer campaigns for dialogue between religions. I think that for non-Muslims, it'll be about discovery, the discovery of another Islam. And for Muslims, they'll have an example, people to follow. However, three prominent French Muslim leaders have jointly condemned the initiative, branding the first co-organizer controversial. Rejecting any link between Islam and terrorism, they say they've long condemned violence and promoted dialogue between religions. The imam's journey returns to Paris next Friday. A massive fire overnight at North London's Camden Market has been brought under control. More than 70 firefighters tackled the blaze which engulfed the first, second and third floors along with the roof of the building. The cause of the fire is unknown and there have been no reports of any injuries or casualties. There are more than a thousand shops and stores at the market, which is also a well-known tourist destination. Eight men on the Greek island of Zakynthos have appeared in court on charges of homicide with intent after an American tourist was beaten to death in a bar brawl. Pakari Henderson, who is 22 years old, sustained injuries to his head and was found dead at Bar Code in the Laganas area of the island early on Friday morning, police said. They reported that a fight had broken out between two groups, which included some of the bar staff. The main street of Laganas is often the scene of obscene and rowdy behavior by drunken tourists. Televidente, non sta mai un break, io ora non sta back e deporta con il nostro collega Carl Reiter. Giù sbarra, pacco, messa lui, IP, 